Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Buddhang saranang gacchami, Dhammang saranang gacchami, Sangang saranang gacchami, Dutiyampi buddhang saranang gacchami, Dutiyampi dhammang saranang gacchami, Dutiyampi sangang saranang gacchami Tatiyampi buddhang saranang gacchami Tatiyampi dhammang saranang gacchami Tatiyampi sangang saranang gacchami Welcome, friends, to this uh, Wednesday evening Dhamma discussion and meditation practice. So, welcome back after a, a one-week uh, absence. So, <clears throat> this week we are continuing our study of the Paticca Samuppada, and uh, so so far in the last few weeks we have uh, have covered. Uh, the first uh, six or seven links to the uh, dependent origination. And uh, I think the last time we were here, we were talking about the links of contact, feeling, or the name and form, actually. Uh, name and form, the six senses. And contact and feeling. Does everybody remember that for those who were here a couple of weeks ago? Just raise your hand if you remember that. Okay. So I mentioned uh, in the, the uh, little newsletter I sent out on uh, Monday that uh, this evening we are going to continue with the probably the most important part of the Paticca Samuppada, of the dependent origination, uh, are the links of craving, grasping, and becoming. Because this is really uh, where, we, where we practice the Dhamma. This is really where Dhamma is uh, practiced, at those steps of feeling, craving, and uh, grasping or uh, craving, grasping, and becoming. Because so far, you know, once we're born in this life, we automatically all the time have ignorance, and we have the uh, consciousness, and we have the mind and body, we have the six senses, we have the contacts, and we have feelings. So basically, these are already created by our past karma, I, meant, I meant, uh, forgot to mention the volitional formations, but, you know, so we brought all that, you know, with us and acquired that uh, at the time of birth, we acquired the mind and body, six senses, and then the, uh, when we come out of the womb, we get contacts, and then feelings arise. Even feelings are created by our past karma. And feelings basically are the pleasant and uh, painful or neutral reactions that we've been accumulating uh, all of our life. Because each person will have a different feeling uh, regarding the different sense impingements. In other words, certain sounds may cause you an unpleasant feeling. Certain other sounds may cause you a pleasant feeling. Now, in somebody else, some of those sounds that cause you a pleasant feeling may cause them an unpleasant feeling, like maybe hearing the sound of somebody you don't like, 
might cause you a, a unpleasant feeling. Oh no, this person is, is talking to me. But somebody else who doesn't know that person or has a different experience with that person may have a pleasant feeling. Oh, this person's talking to me. Uh, and so the same way with foods we eat, things we uh, you know smell, taste, and feel. Uh, you know we've cultivated our reactions to these things, uh, and uh, kind of reestablished or strengthened these ideas of uh, painful and pleasant feelings ar arisen by certain uh, contacts. Now, of course. Certain contacts are universally painful, like nobody likes a toothache, right? Or uh, getting sick, uh, and, and especially bodily pains. Uh, but through practice, we can change the feelings from a painful feeling, perhaps to a neutral feeling, or from a sensual pleasure, a pleasant feeling. If it's causing us problems, we can turn it into a neutral feeling or even a painful feeling depending on how we practice. And that practice comes in these next three stages of craving, grasping, and becoming. Now, so the formula, you know, depending on contact arises feeling. Depending on the feeling arises craving. Now, craving is the initial desire or attraction to a particular object. Let's say a, a sound, like you hear a, a pleasant sound, like the sound of the birds chirping in the morning. So cause maybe a pleasant feeling arises in you. Uh, and so uh, then, <clears throat> but anyway, so the the painful or the pleasant feeling arises. And it's just that initial reaction. Now, and so the craving is really not that strong, but the next, the next uh, step is grasping. So grasping is where we, we have that feeling, but then we want it. And we start clinging to it and start to th our thoughts uh, arise based on how am I going to get that object of my desire or how am I going to get away from that object of this uh, unpleasant feeling. Uh, and so it's the, the attachment or a, a clinging to that feeling that's called the grasping. That means you're holding on to it. So it's like when you grasp something like, you know, and you're holding on to it, that's grasping. So grasping is a intensified level of craving. And grasping is where most of our thinking arises toward an object. So the initial craving is that initial desire. Let's say on a hot day, your, your throat is dry and you have a thought come in the mind, uh, you remember, oh, there's an ice cold Dr. Pepper in the fridge, <laughs> you know, <laughs> desire to, to have a cold drink. Okay, so that, that's just an initial desire. And it won't go anywhere unless you start continue to think about it. Uh, and if you have mindfulness, this is where mindfulness plays its important part. You can't immediately be free from uh, the craving. The craving is going to uh, arise because of past uh, accumulated karma. Uh, but that's where we establish mindfulness. And we then can uh, consider, is this object that I want, is it really necessary to have it right now? Uh, and then if you say yes, then you know, the mind then, you know, thinks about, justifies why it should have this object and, and uh, you know, uh, clings to that notion that I need that right now. Now, if your mindfulness is stronger, you say, no, you know, it, it can wait for another hour. You can kind of let it go and you, you stop thinking about it. You think about something else or something else takes your attention and you, you know, 
you focus on another object and you forget about that initial desire to have a cool drink. So that means the desire wasn't very strong. But if you, as I've already mentioned, if you start thinking about it and justifying, planning, how are you going to get it, uh, and all so many thoughts related, uh, eventually that will uh, come to the point where you have to make a decision on what you're going to do about it. Are you going to go after the object of the desire or the aversion? You know, like, let's say, to brush off a, a fly or an insect that might have landed on you or scratch an itch, you know. Uh, and so once you've actually decided what to do and then actually do the object, such as scratch the itch, that's a common example, right? So uh, then you've uh, strengthened that habit. You strengthen the idea that it itch is bad and I don't like it and I want to get rid of it. Uh, and so that is the becoming. So the becoming, to keep it simple, uh, is basically the, the action, the thoughts and actions that you uh, do that create the karma. So it's called, called uh, uh, Kama Bhava, the karma becoming, which is the strengthening of habits. Uh, and that's because you, you gave in to either desire uh, to get the object uh, or you, or to get away from uh, the painful object, which is the feeling. So the object and the feeling basically are identical. Uh, uh, so that's why, depending on feeling, arises the craving. So if the feeling is a painful one, there'll be a, a, a craving to get rid of it. And if the, the feeling is a pleasant one, there'll be a desire to get a hold of it, uh, you know, to go after it. <clears throat> and so the, it's called becoming because the habit becomes stronger your desire for the object becomes stronger, or your desire to get away from that particular pain uh, becomes stronger. And so that now becomes, goes back and strengthens your volitional formations. So this is where becoming goes back and strengthens number two, volitional formations, which are the unconscious re repository of all of our past uh, thoughts and actions. Uh, are coming from the becoming. And so there's this feedback loop from uh, becoming back to Sankara, whether you're increasing the Sankaras of desire or you're decrease, uh, or decreasing, decreasing them by resisting them, you know, by not acting upon them. So that's how those three uh, uh, parts of the craving, grasping, and becoming uh, are really play the important part. And this, especially when we're, you know, practicing mindfulness. And really to, to practice the whole eightfold path, uh, you know, the whole practice depends on these three, this process of craving, grasping, and becoming, uh, because we either create more conditions for further pain and suffering to come back to us, like breaking the precepts, for example. If you have the, you know, uh, something arises and because of contact, uh, you hear about something and then, oh, you know, the desire to tell a lie about it so you can, you know, either get it or get away from it and so on. Uh, or the same way with the urge to speak uh, you know, you hear somebody speak something and there's a desire to, to you know, uh, talk back to them. And so that's where mindfulness is important. Mindfulness and, and right understanding plays its important part in transforming uh, the, the, the 
you know, the negative craving into, uh, you know, the opposite. Or, uh, you know, if the object is not, if we see the object is going to cause more attachment and more problems, then we have to make the effort to abandon that uh, impulse and replace it with a, with a positive impulse by practicing the opposite. So instead of, let's say, cultivating thoughts of hatred toward a person, uh, which would be the, uh, you know, the sort of the negative action, we, because of mindfulness and right effort, we instead cultivate metta toward the person rather than generating more thoughts of anger or ill will to the person. And that's why, that's how we can gradually weaken the negative sankharas and cultivate the wholesome uh, sankharas uh, that we, we may not have yet. But it, it depends on these three uh, sort of stages of craving, grasping, and, and becoming. And that's what where it requires our right understanding and right thought as well as the, all of the steps of the, the Noble Eightfold Path are required in order to transform, uh, you know, the negative actions of greed, hatred, and delusion into the opposites of right understanding, uh, you know, non-greed and uh, non-hatred. Uh, and so that's why, you know, without mindfulness and right effort, you won't be able to to apply that process uh, to these uh, these three stages. Now, uh, becoming is, is the actual again to repeat it. The becoming is the actual the step of creating the kama. Now, for example, let's say if a fly uh, lands on you, so most people would have a kind of a you know, unpleasant feeling arise because of our memory and our thinking old oh, flyers are dirty. And so we have this uh, unpleasant feeling or you get stung by a bee or, you know, so many things, anything, so many things. So uh, if you have good mindfulness, you can say, okay, it's not too bad and kind of just let it be, don't react to it. But if it turns into grasping, then the mind starts justifying, yes, you know, maybe the fly has a disease, maybe I better get rid of it now or uh, whatever. Anyway, you, you consider those, uh, the, the grasping. So the craving turns into the grasping. Uh, and then grasping lasts a little bit longer. Craving is just the initial, the initial impulse to either like or dislike something. Now I'm kind of just kind of simplifying it because these are the, the normal ways that these things affect us. Uh, but grasping is the is the planning, the scheming, the conniving, and the various kind of things uh, leading up to the determination of the. What are you going to do about it? So if the fly lands on you, and let's say that initial urge to want to, uh, you know, shoo it away uh, comes up, and you can consider now it's not that bad. Uh, let me, uh, you know, have discipline and just relax. The fly is only going to stay there a couple of seconds, going to fly away. Uh, or you just observe it. You get some. You know, you learn how to observe it, you feel all those changing sensation, sensations as the fly walks up your cheek and gets into your corner of your eye or goes up your nostril, right? And then, you you know, all kind of fireworks go off and you can see the mind really freaking out. Uh, and and that urge to want to get rid of it gets stronger. And you, you observe that, you know, you contemplate that. You say, oh, it's not that bad, just relax. Uh, but if you can't resist it, maybe the the hand then lifts up like this, you know, and 
and yet you have a last second, you have one last chance to decide, am I going to smack that fly or kill it or not? So, you, you know, you have that, you have to make that decision. And if the wisdom keep kicks in and you say, no, I won't, I won't do that. Okay. And you put the hand down. Then at least you haven't committed the, the, you know, broke the precept, let's say, for example, of killing the fly. Uh, but you don't want it to. Okay. So the, the becoming actually just prevents the physical actions. You know, that step of becoming is actually stops you from actually performing the negative karmic action of, let's say, breaking any of the precepts. Uh, but you still might have liked to do it. So it doesn't necessarily change your thoughts. It doesn't change the grasping in the mind. So the becoming is affected by following precepts uh, and also by applying the right effort to cultivate the wholesome becomings. Like the, if you get up in the morning and, uh, you know, you don't feel like meditating or you feel like sleeping in, you know, then the same process, you'll debate whether that. You know, if I don't go Bantarugula, no, I didn't come to meditation in the morning. <laughs> you know, so you may uh, uh, force yourself to, to get up and come to meditation. Then you come to meditation and you have the best meditation of your whole life. I mean, sometimes that's happened. So uh, you never know. But anyway, so the, the becoming, uh, you know, it affects mostly our physical actions, what we do with the body and the, and the speech. But the grasping uh, affects our thoughts. So that's why in, uh, the, following the precepts avoids the negative becoming, you know, the negative actions. The practice of concentration helps to minimize grasping because grasping are just various thoughts that we have. The, you know, thoughts and, you know, should I, shouldn't I, well, you know, this and that. So when you concentrate and you, you minimize your thoughts, as your thoughts subside, as you gain deeper concentration, then you stop thinking about those things. Those thoughts won't come up. So that's how concentration he uh, helps to reduce the grasping of the mind, which is basically the, the thinking. Uh, And then the, the, the craving is the, even though craving is said to be, the, you know, the, the cause of suffering, if you read the description of the Noble Eightfold Path, you know, the second noble truth is cause of suffering is normally translated as craving. But actually, <laughs> craving is, not that bad, because again, craving, we can't help it. We are born because of craving, and it, it's the result of past karma. But we can reduce the amount of craving we have by reducing grasping and then becoming. Uh, so that's why the, uh, so don't worry too much about craving. Some people hear the Buddhist teaching and they say, oh, you have to get, get rid of all craving, and they go, oh my gosh, that's going to be impossible. So I said, don't worry about craving. Worry about grasping and becoming. That's something that you can actually do something about. Until you reach the stage of once returning, you're not going to affect craving. Craving is only reduced when you attain the second stage of enlightenment from the technical standpoint. Sure, we can reduce the amount of craving through our practice, like, you know, you can give up eating ice cream, you can give up <laughs> taking sugar in your coffee or whatever, you know, kind of cravings that you might have, uh, you know, you can give up some of those uh, simply by thinking about it or seeing the, you know, the, 
the harmful effects of consuming, let's say, negative things or curbing your bad speech and, and so on. But, uh, uh, but the, the deepest roots of that are only uh, ill will and greed and ill will or hatred are only uh, permanently reduced through attaining the second stage of enlightenment. So, you know, <clears throat> don't be too hard on yourself if you still have certain, you know, cravings and desires in the mind, because as long as those cravings and desires don't cause you to break any of the precepts, then they're considered, you know, okay. But it's mainly the ones that are going to cause us to break the precepts or do some other things that might you know, cause harm to ourselves, but mainly it's the, the precepts, because those are the things that bring the heaviest amount of guilt, worry, remorse, and fear, and problems uh, with society, and even with your own family, you know, telling tales about others, telling lies, harsh speech, uh, you know, these things that we <laughs> do, you know, quite out of habit. Those are the things that we really need to, uh, you know, try to work on because those are the things that come back to, you know, cause us problems. So anyway, I just wanted to mention these, uh, these stages of craving, grasping and becoming because these are what you can actually see in daily life. You know, when you're out there, when you're, you know, you're, you're in traffic, when you're at your work site or whatever you're doing. Uh, you're going shopping, you can see this process of craving, grasping, and becoming in your mind. And sometimes it happens in a, in a flash of a second, all three of those will happen. But when you start, when you catch yourself, but should I do this, should I not do that? And, you know, I really want that, and making excuses why you need it, and then uh, that's grasping. You reckon it, uh, that's grasping. And then when it comes to the point of deciding that you're going to do it and you actually get ready to do it, then that's when you, you know, need to understand this is becoming. Because once you do it, you can't bring it back. Once that energy goes out of your body, your speech, or your thoughts, you can't really bring it back. You can only say, oh, shucks, I shouldn't have done that. You know, and um, you know, make the best effort uh, not to do it again. So you know, uh, but, but, you know, the, the painful feeling that, you know, the painful and pleasant feelings, these are the things we can observe. You can't avoid contacts. Of course you can, of course, you could wear earplugs and you can, but normally contacts are going to happen. Feelings are going to happen, but you can be mindful of them, reflect on them so that the, the craving for them doesn't arise. But when the craving does arise, uh, then, then focus on the grasping, not let grasping get out of control. And this is where you have to reflect on, you know, using the, the Buddhist understanding and the Dhamma to, uh, you know, to consider about what you're going to, to do. This is the Buddha gave his advice, advice to his son Rahula about the speech. Whenever you have a thought to speak, or to do something, you should ask yourself before you do it, is what I'm about to do, is it going to hurt me, myself, or others, or both? And if you see that effect is going to be harmful to yourself, others, or both, don't do it. But if you see that that thought uh, uh, may not be harmful to oneself, or both, or others, uh, then, uh, then the right time to do it, uh, you know, you could pursue it. Uh, and then if in the middle of doing something that you know, let's say you started to tell a lie, and then you realize, oh, I shouldn't, and then, then maybe before it gets too embedded in the other person, you could say, oh, wait, Maybe it wasn't that. Maybe uh, maybe I exaggerated a bit. Okay, I, I take that back. You can kind of, before you've told a lot, you know, you can change it. So the Buddha said, even while you're doing it, consider what I'm doing now is it harmful for uh, to myself, others, or both. 
then cut it off right there and then stop talking or go away from a, a certain person if you you know you're getting so upset you're going to punch them out or uh, you know something worse uh, or to you know go out of the the pastry shop if you're you know <laughs> get yourself you know starting to you know buy a whole bag of donuts to go consume or something anyway so uh you know, that's the way we have to try to, uh, you know, practice the Dhamma in the daily life because these things come up all the time, uh, hundreds of times in one day. This process is probably going through your mind in one way or another. Some are very strong, some are very subtle. But that's really where the practice of Dhamma comes. And that's why mindfulness is the most important mental factor to develop for being able to do that. Because without mindfulness, you're not going to be able to catch those impulses before you've, you know, uh, created the becoming on those. Uh, okay, friends, so uh, I think we've, uh, you know, gone over that uh, subject. And uh, now let's see if uh, there's any See if there's something in the chat box here. Okay, do we have equal chance of intercepting at craving, clinging, grasping, and becoming? Do we have equal capacity to notice all these three at any level of practice? Well, you have to be aware of that initial craving uh, before it turns into grasping, because then it's easier to do something about it. Once you started grasping, then, uh, you know, it's going to take longer uh, to sort of come to the right uh, decision. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it happens so quickly, like in a sudden accident or something happens and you just react without even thinking instinctual things. Now, there you, you know, you, 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 uh, unless you had the, the mindfulness of an arahant or something like that, you're probably not going to be able to prevent that uh, becoming, or you get stung by a bee, right? In the, uh, so, um, but it's easiest to intercept it. Uh, well, it might be, yeah, intercepting it at the becoming. Now, you might not be able to stop the craving and grasp, grasping because the mind operates so fast. But now it's it uh, the mind has to then tell the body what to do in terms of like breaking a precept, killing, lying, stealing, cheating, sexual misconduct, and so on. So all those are primarily bodily actions or speech. So uh, therefore, if you have the precepts you can, it might be easier to prevent becoming. It probably is the easiest to prevent becoming. Uh, and then you work back. And once you, you delay the becoming, then you can uh, work on reducing the grasping. Uh, that's why sila, samadhi, and panya, I'm going to talk more about that later, but the you know, the process of uh, sila, samadhi, and panya, we use sila or the precepts to prevent becoming. We use samadhi to weaken grasping or the thinking mind, because when you attain concentration, the thoughts subside. Uh, and then we use panya or wisdom to eliminate the craving. So I would say Probably most people are going to succeed uh, on becoming easier uh, because it's easier to stop the body and then stop the mind for the most part, right? So, um, is it possible? for us to crave and not grasp. Uh, the initial craving, yes, if the initial craving, let's say that use that example, uh, an idea comes up to, you know, on a hot day or 
you know, to have a cold soda. Uh, could, could be anything else, but that's just a, you know, kind of typical example. And you can say, no, that's just, that's just a desire. I don't really need it right now. And, uh, you know, uh, you tell yourself, well, oh, you know, wait a few hours or something, <laughs> you know, so you can, uh, you can kind of prevent the mind from grasping uh, on, on the cravings that are kind of, you know, fairly weak, you know, and if you have a good mindfulness, so you can cut it off at craving, but if it turns into grasping, then you have a chance to of reflecting on it while the grasping takes place uh, and, and then to prevent the becoming. So, you know, because stimulations and things all, you know, happen so uh, unexpectedly and all the time and in different intensities that, uh, you know, there's no one exact uh, way that they're gonna kind of affect affect each other. But you cannot grasp without craving. So, uh, uh, you know, the craving has to come first. That's why I say depending on craving arises grasping um, and then becoming. Is becoming the actual action that ones take or the step before the actual action? Once the action is taken, does it become birth? Uh, well, I was going to talk about uh, the the birth uh, uh, next week because uh, it would take too long to go into that right now. But uh, is, is becoming the actual action. Well, yes. Uh, it's the actual action, uh, the, the karmic action. So the, the grasping is, is the, the thinking about it, and then you come to a decision. There's an intention, but again, you could change that. It, it is becoming because even thinking about something and increasing your desires is a, is a kind of becoming, but the, the heavy comic becoming is when you actually do the action, such as, you know, killing a, a fly or a mos mosquito or stomping on a cockroach. You know, you could be going back, should I, shouldn't I, and back and forth for a long time. And finally, you decide you're going to do it, but at the very last minute, something might arise and say, no, and you don't do it. So you've created a, a negative becoming in your thoughts leading up to that but you've you've prevented the actual karma of the the actual killing because to kill something means you have to actually kill uh, an object to you know if you uh, you know are following the uh, you know the technical definitions of breaking uh, you know a, a precept so the becoming, yes, any, any thoughts that you indulge in is you're going to be uh, increasing the mental becoming. That means the habit of the desire. Uh, but it's, you know, you, you can have desires, but if you don't act upon them, okay, it may affect your own mind, but it's not going to, you know, go out in the world and get you caught, put in prison, you know, just having the the thought to steal something, but if you change your mind and you don't do it, you're not going to go to jail just for having the thought. Uh, although, you know, that gets into law and some other kind of things like, uh, <laughs> but still it's, it's not a skillful thing, but uh, so it's the actual breaking of the precept that is going to cause somebody to come, you know, come looking for you to stab you or, you know, you, you told their best secrets and so on. Okay, so I had a question about the five aggregates. Why does feeling come before perception? Uh, well, that's, that's a whole nother question that we'll, we'll try to cover at another point. Uh, 
Sometimes a perception might come before the, the feeling, uh, but you know, normally it's, it's in that order of feeling. What you feel, that is what you perceive. Uh, but sometimes, like, especially when you see something, you see a, you know, ghost or a, an object, then, you know, they're, they're so quick. We're talking about nanoseconds, right? Micro nanoseconds, an infinitesimal amount of smallest time that basically they occur together. You know, don't make it too complicated. Now, sometimes in our experience, it may feel the feeling comes first, and then the perception. Of course, like you get a bee sting, right? So immediately there's the, the painful feeling, and then you think of the bee, right? The painful, and, and so in some instances, especially when seeing, the feeling might come first, and then you just you decided what the object is, which is the perception. But in other instances, the perception might come first, followed by uh, the feeling. Uh, just like you go to the dentist, right? And so just the perception of going to the dentist's office, then that's because of the causes the painful feeling to come up. Uh, so, you know, they're kind of interchangeable. So don't, don't uh, make a big deal out of it, trying to find out exactly which came uh, first. Feeling is a natural reaction as human. Craving is a manifestation of the self coming from contact. Uh, craving is simply the, the, the habit, the desire that comes from our past karma, uh, you know, that we brought with us, the craving for certain objects but it comes from a contact. If there's not contact, the craving is not going to arise. Uh, such as when you're asleep, there might be a lot of sounds going around in your house and a lot of objects around, but your senses are not working. So there's no contact. Uh, you know, let's say you're sleeping in your bed and then a, a robber or somebody comes into the, you know, the bedroom with a, with a raised knife or something and uh you're sleeping right so you don't have contact yet but then you hear a noise and you open your eyes and boom there's contact then you know fear arises and and all that so the contact has to be there to uh you know stimulate the the craving for the reaction okay friends uh so i think we'll go ahead and stop there so we can uh, still have our short session of some yoga and then our, our meditation, okay? So we'll try to continue this discussion uh, next week and, you know, come up with some other uh, questions. Uh, we'll, we'll try to cover the meaning of uh, the birth because that has some different connotations to it, uh, okay? So let's take a few minutes. Uh, take a break uh, to use the facilities or, uh, and then come back for some stretches and meditation. See you back in a few minutes. Go ahead and begin the yoga sessions and try to relax your arms at the sides. Close your eyes, just begin some three, some three part breathing. Just try to feel the outline of the standing body and the mind's eye. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. 
an extend breath, raise the arms over the head, interlock the fingers, turn the palms up, straighten the arms, stretch your head back, stretch upwards, release the fingers, out breath, arms back to the sides. Again, in breath. Stretch up, bend back a little bit through the arch in the spine. <clears throat> Out breath. Once more, in. Oh, that upward stretch longer, try to bend back a little more. Breath. Let's close the eyes, keep feeling the body, feel the increased sensations, especially in your hands and fingers. Feel that contact producing sensation. contact with the oxygen to the cells, the cells vibrating because of that contacting each other, the cells bumping into each other, that's contact producing the vibrations. We go through the nervous system and feel pleasant or painful or neutral feelings. When you think about them, ah, that's the body sensation. In the next in breath, lift up on the toes while raising the arms over the head, face the hands toward each other, stretch up. Out breath, come back down. Again, in breath, stretch. Once more, close the eyes, keep feeling the body. Feel the increased sensations, material vibrations that are manifesting these pleasant or painful sensations. If you have an acre of pain, it's probably an unpleasant sensation. If you have some tingling sensation in your <coughs> fingers. Or other places, maybe a pleasant sensation, a lot of neutral sensation. This is Paticca Samuppada in the law, observed contact, feeling, liking, disliking. Mm -hmm. Next, we'll do the side bending using both arms. On the in breath, raise both arms up. <clears throat> Keep your fingers and arms straight, close to your head. Out breath, bend over the right side. In breath, lift up. Pause a moment on the other side. Out breath. Especially during the stretches, be aware of the unpleasant sensations, particularly painful ones. 
been kind of arrived though. Yeah. Once more to each side. Now breath through the arms, infusing the body, contact feeling. You know, spread the legs apart, wider the better. Moving the arms out, twisting from right to left. <coughs> Breathe in. Out breath to the right. Keep your eyes focused on the hand going by. In breath back to the front. Let the feet turn with the body and push to the other side out the yeah. both in any sides. Feel each foot pressing the floor. That contact to work elements. The foot pressed to the floor. Producing the material vibration. And all those points where the clothing is touching the skin with all contacts, producing sensation. Now we'll do the forward and backward bending, keeping the legs apart. Breathe in. On the out breath, bend forward. Keep your head lifted up, looking out straight ahead. Let your hands come to the kneecaps the first time. They're flat in your back and the spine, making it like a tabletop. Straight legs, straight arms. In breath, lift up. Bring the hands under the buttocks for support. Let your head go back and breathe out. Gently bend back. Keep your eyes open. Feel the arch of the spine. 
his breath carefully lift up. The second time, bend forward, let the hands come below your knees, we'll keep the head up, legs straight. In breath. Again, the back bend, be careful. And bend back a little more. In breath. Third time, let the hands come down as far as you can toward the feet. Keep your legs straight. Let the little bones in the lower spine stretch out. Hold that a little longer. In the in-breath, lift up. Once more, the back bend, be careful. In breath, lift up. In the out of breath, relax your shoulders and arms, feel the whole body moving. Life force, releasing all those sensations some are pleasant, some may be unpleasant, some are neutral. We like the pleasant ones, we don't like the unpleasant ones. See that directly in the mind. We now bring the legs and feet closer together. We'll do one last exercise. The head turning from right to left. From the end breath, turn the head to the right. You look over your right shoulder. Give a twist in the neck. The out breath and all the way back to the left, to look over the left shoulder. In breath, back to the right. Feel the neck vertebrae loosening up. Out breath, left. Once more to each side. In breath, let the head stop in the middle. Keep feeling the body. Look for the outline of the body in the mind's eye. We're going to do one last, uh, another head and neck exercise. <coughs> On the in breath, lift your chin up towards the ceiling, and then on the out breath, stretch the head further back. Look up at the ceiling over your head. In breath, lift the head up, and jet the chin out a little bit, and on the out breath, press the chin to the little notch at the top of the chest. <coughs> Stretch the neck vertebrae with the neck vertebrae, join the spinal column. 
new breath the chin up out breath stretch the head back in breath lift the head get out the chin press the chest to the out breath In breath, lift the chin. Out breath, stretch the head back. In breath, lift the chin. Out breath, press the chest. And in breath, lift the chin up level. Relax. Feeling the body and feel that organic aliveness of the body, the cellular vibration. Just in the space of a couple of seconds, there are literally thousands of contacts going on. Clothing touching the skin in so many places, cells all over the body, sensation on the skin. The whole Pratichi Samapada basically occurring in, you know, thousands, if not a million times in the space of a second or two. All happening through the nervous system. Okay, so now let's mindfully come back to our seats to get ready for the sitting. Friends, get comfortable in your in the sitting posture. Just try to sit straight. Just feel the head balanced on top of the spinal column. Just 
gently close your eyes or feel the outline of the sitting posture in the mind's eye. We'll begin some three-part breathing, deep, slow breathing, to tune in to the sitting, breathing body. Some breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. And I will count the breaths from one to ten. Try to develop a more continuous concentration on the breathing. Let's keep your attention focused on the expanding and contracting movements of your abdomen, stomach, rib cage, your chest. I'll do the counting for you. Just try to follow that with your breathing and concentration. So in the next expanding in breath, mentally count to one. Hold the breath in a second. And with the contracting out breath, also count to one. Feel the last bit of air go out of the lung. The next in breath, two. Out breath, two. In three. Out three. In four, out four, in five. Out five in six out six. In seven, out seven, in 
in a out a in nine out nine in ten Out ten now you can continue to try to count your breaths from one to ten again by yourself. See if you can make it to ten without my prompting or otherwise if you're fairly relaxed and centered, let the counting go and just continually remember. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Just turning into the present moment of this breathing body. Just let the breathing return to its uncontrolled, shorter, irregular rhythm. And continue to observe it, to feel it. Feel those contacts of the rib cage, clothing rubbing against the skin, producing those sensations. Contact producing those sensations which are felt as pleasant or unpleasant or neutral. Just try to have the mind of a scientist looking down through a microscope to observe the Sensation. Breathing in, sitting. Breathing out, sitting. Because we have this mind and body and the senses, we have these contacts producing all these sensations, which are pleasant, painful, or neutral.
especially be alert to notice any painful or pleasant sensations that pull at the mind. Liking or the disliking. Notice any craving or wanting based on any sensation. If the mind gets caught up in thinking, just observe the mind grasping at a certain idea or desire or aversion. Thinking of what to do about something. Just the grasping of the mind. Well, it's a painful sensation on the body. Notice the mind thinking whether to move or not to move. Make a decision about it.
be alert for any urges or desires that are arising, just a kind of craving, the urge to move or the urge to think. And if you decide to actually do it or not, becoming
Time to time, take a few deep, slow breaths. Re-energize the awareness. Keep the mind centered in the body. Just keep turning up the power of the mental microscope to notice subtler, finer details. Contact, feeling, craving, grasping, becoming. Breath by breath, moment by moment.
What sensations, feelings, thoughts arise from that contact with the bell and the ear? Dukkha Pata Jani Dukkha Bhaya Pata Jani Bhaya Soka Pata Jani Soka On to some baby no. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. In this way, may all beings live with mindfulness and wisdom. And thus spoke the Buddha. I'll finish the meditation. I invite you to join in chanting the word sadhu three times slowly. We do the chanting on a long out breath, feeling those vibrations in the body and mind. So take a deep breath. So Mindfully place your hands at the edge of your knees and take one more deep breath. As you breathe in, stretch your head back, pull the hands on the knees to arch your spine. And lift the head up on an in breath, and on the out breath, press the chin to the top of the chest. Stretch the neck vertebrae. Breathe in, lift the chin up, level. Out breath, relax. Okay, friends. So this brings our evening Dhamma discussion and meditation to an end. And during the week, try to, you know, be aware of the process of contact, feeling, craving, grasping, and becoming in your mind and body. You know, especially when you certain things happen it's fairly easy to observe that make the paticca samapara something real that you can actually observe rather than thinking it's some theory or something like that 
Okay. Okay. Uh, so next week we'll try to see how a craving, grasping, and becoming leads to birth. So until then, be well, be safe, be mindful, be wise. Mindfulness today keeps dukkha away. And Namo Buddhaya. Thank you, everyone. Everyone have a good Thank night. You. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Namo Buddhaya. Bhante. Thank you again, Bhante and everyone. Thank <laughs> you.